Well, thanks for joining me for this short tutorial on how to save a project in Advisor. There's three reasons why you might want to do that. One is you've done some work and you want to save it as is with a snapshot of the data and come back and do some more analysis in, say, a couple of days. Or maybe you want to save it and then uh, open it again in a couple of days with updated data and see what's changed. Or the third is you might want to push your work out to a group of people who can access it either by uh, advisor client software or over the web through advisor server with browsers or with iPads. Either way, saving your work as a project is how that occurs. So let's look at how to do that. Here we have a five-page project up and running. We're looking at the first page, which has three charts on it. If I want to save this, I go up here to the File menu, Save Project As, and it gives me two options, a file with a .adv extension or a file with a .advm extension. The .adv extension will save my work without the data. It saves the load routines, the calculations, the page builds, the chart builds and setup, but no data. So if I open one of these, it's going to go out to wherever my data sources are over the network or locally and grab all the data and reload and rebuild the project. The ADVM is different in that it saves the project with the snapshot of data I now have embedded in it, all the tables. So it's not going to go reload data. It's going to load the data that's currently in it. Take a look at this. Uh, here's the directory. Uh, this is one of our demo projects, Campaign Analysis 5. It's an ADV. It's a 25 kilobyte file. It's literally just an XML definition of the project. Here's the same project as an ADVM. It's a 34 megabyte file. The difference is the ADVM in this case has roughly 20 oracle tables, probably a couple million rows, 200 fields. Uh, so it's a 34 meg file. The data is embedded and compressed. All the calculations are stored in and so forth. Our ADVM files will run in size from, uh, if it's an Excel spreadsheet, it might be 100K. If it's a larger project with, say, 80 or 90 million rows, 50 tables, 400, 500 fields, that could be a four or 500 megabyte project file. Again, we compressed heavily, and that's, but that's sort of the range of what we're dealing with here. Now, uh, let's go back to these two formats. I can save back and forth from one to the other. So here I'm running an ADVM. If I want to save that as an ADV, I just go save project as an ADV. Let's put this on my desktop, save it. So now it's saved on my desktop. It is an ADV at this point. It transitioned. So if I open this file now from my desktop, it's going to go load the data and refresh itself. I also can go to the file menu up here, since it's an ADV and go down here and refresh data. It's going to go out and refresh the data. Or I might be on my task view open, and there's a, in the low data, there's a capability to refresh data. So and with this, we use this with our sales team. So we're going to be reviewing sales deals. We use salesforce.com. We're looking at things. We're having a discussion. You know, maybe one of the things needs to be re-rated or moved to another probability level. We do that in Salesforce. It's our, where we store all the stuff. So we're making all these changes. and then. You know, it's 20 minutes into the meeting. We want to see what the portfolio looks like with the updated data. We just click Refresh Data, and it goes back and reloads, and we're refreshed. That's a good example of when you'd want to use an ADV project. Now, an ADVM, there's kind of three reasons why you might want to use one of those. The first is you're pushing it out to a group of people, say 100 people, and uh, you don't want this banging on the database as these people are using it during the day. So you want to have it load once at night and then be off the database. The second reason is is you want people to have consistent view of the data. What you may not want is somebody does some analysis at 9 in the morning, comes into their boss at noon, sits down while the data's changed, because now you've got a half a day new data in it. No, you, in many cases, you'd rather have a snapshot from the day before. The third reason to use an ADVM is it's much more efficient. Uh, three reasons for that. One is. Our load time is substantially faster. A large ADVM project is going to open in 10, 20, 30, 40 seconds. A similar ADV has got to go over the network, pull data. It's, it's relegated to the network speed in the middle of the day, the database write times, and then we've got to calculate a bunch of stuff before we build out the project. So an ADV, if it's a small spreadsheet, might load in 10 seconds. If it's pulling you know, 50 tables from an Oracle database that's busy, it might be 10, 15 minutes. So Generally, in production, uh, we want to use the ADVM file format, not the ADV. And generally, those users aren't the ones who are like, mucking around, want to get quick updates, all this on-demand stuff. Um, so 
And we talked about that you can save back and forth from one to the other. Uh, we also keep a date stamp. So in the expression builders, there's a couple of time fields. Um, one is now, which is the current time. Another field is now data load. So with an ADVM, if you're calculating time differences, like if you want, I don't know, uh, contacts or transactions in the thir last 30 days, and you're using a calculation to get that, uh, you use the now data load because maybe the ADVM was just gets refreshed weekly or something. So you want to count back off of that. So that's a, a bit of a slight tangent, but we do keep a time stamp of when the data is loaded and it's accessible through the expression builder as a field now data load. See the expression builder tutorial for how to do that. So the last thing we want to talk about here is you've saved your work and you want to now put it into production so that it just automatically refreshes on a daily basis or, or time uh, some other time period or by some event. So to do that, uh, you save an ADV file as a master project file, which everybody's going to work with. And I'll, I'll point out here, we generally like to see some one person own this. If it's going to say 100 people over the web, you don't want a bunch of users changing this. You want this some control procedure with usually a person responsible for it. It's saved on a designated spot on a file server. The server needs a copy of advisor analyst. We point out here from a licensing perspective, you, this is not a seat you have to purchase. If you bought a 10 pack of user seats, 10 users can use our client software. And you can also put one, another one on, on this server for this nightly refresh. It doesn't come out of the 10 pack. This ADV project, as we talked about, can, contains the database source definitions, the logon permissions, it open and access those tables, those calculations, sets up pages, puts up charts, and builds the project out. Windows Scheduler, small script, starts a script to run a utility, ADV to ADV, and we ship this utility with all of our install packages, so it's there. This utility opens the ADV file, which loads the data, then it converts it to an ADVM file and stores it at a specified location on the file server. This typical script runs it. This script would create a file named this and put it at the specified location. Then the end users come in. They can open this with a client software, um, analyst, desktop navigator, or access it via browser or iPad over the web through advisor server. So to summarize, um, a couple ways to save an advisor project. Uh, you can save it as an ADV or as an ADVM. There's different times you'd want to use one or the other. If you have one, uh, you can save it as the other. So if you have an ADVM and want to refresh, save it back as an ADV, then you can refresh the data as long as you have access to it. And by the way, I'll point out, uh, if the ADV can't find the tables and the source definitions, it'll throw up a window and say, I can't find the specific table. You can then browse to where it is uh, obviously, if you don't have access to it, it's not going to load because it can't find the data. But you can save back and forth between these two types. And then uh, you can use that script mechanism to put it in production, which is what we recommend uh, as an ADVM uh, to a larger group of people.